Hey, good morning. Welcome to Trinity. My name is Bryce Madison. It's great to be worshiping with you this morning. Great to see smiling faces ready to worship. Let's stand as we, uh, as we join in worship together.
hearts long for. Lord, that we would just be visited by you here in this place. Lord, in a way that we couldn't, we can't describe, in a way that that is completely different for us. Lord, because you are. You are holy. You are almighty God. And so, Lord, it's your presence only that we seek this morning. Your presence in our lives, in this moment, God. Lord, we just seek to know you more. We just seek to go a little bit deeper with you today. And so, God, would you just draw us in? Would you just draw us in this morning as we're seeking you? God, we know that you say when we seek you with our whole hearts, we will find you. Thank you for that promise, Lord. Thank you for the promise that you are always with us, that you never forsake us. And so whatever, whatever circumstance, God, whatever we're walking in with today, we just give that up to you. We just release it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, that your name and your name only would be lifted high in our hearts, God. That only you would be at the forefront of our minds, of our hearts, that you would sit on the throne of our hearts. So, Lord, just as you're with us now, we pray that you would just be with us. Lord, that just as we're worshiping now, we pray that our lives would be offered as worship to you, holy and pleasing. So, God, we give you this morning. And we ask all this in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can have a seat this morning. Good morning, everybody. We are so glad to have you here this morning as we are getting ready to finish out our summer sermon series today on the Ten Commandments. Uh, there are a number of things that are going on that we would love you to uh, know about or be a part of. So uh, let me give you just a few of those here this morning. Uh, children's ministry training is happening right after this service. So uh, if you serve in children's ministry, uh, make sure you get back there with Jen and Jenny uh, and uh, get trained up there today. Just out of curiosity, how many of you are children's ministry volunteers? Right, wave your hand like you're proud, like way up there. Yeah, give those folks, look at all those folks. A round of applause to all those people. We are excited for uh, that there this morning. Let's see, uh, worship is going on. That's right. All right, so Abe Kramer is having another worship night this Friday at 7 p.m. And it won't be here. It'll be over at Harrison Smith Park. So bring your lawn chairs, bring your bug spray. That's probably a good idea. And it's coming out. We'll have an awesome night of worship uh, with Abe. Awesome. That's uh, and then on Sunday, a week from today, is Move Up Sunday. So uh, whatever grade you're in, you're moving up. Uh, starting next week in Sunday school, 11:15 uh, Sunday school returns. So if this is your normal service, uh, during this hour we'll bring Sunday school back starting next week. So be sure you check that out. And uh, let's see, we're finishing up the sermon series. That's right. So we're finishing up Ten Commandments, right? And it's only appropriate that we would show the Ten Commandments film at the Star Theater. So we're partnering up with the Council on Age Aging on this one. And so next Tuesday, come on out at 6 p.m. and uh, See, see the Ten Commandments at the Star Theater. Right, the best special effects 1956 has to offer. So that was awesome. So come back on out on, on that one. And uh, then finally to let you know, uh, Reignite is uh, in full swing to come back on August 29th. Uh, and so uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders will start with worship time and then small groups and uh, time in the gym. Uh, high schoolers will start with uh, some time in the gym and then worship and then small group. So uh, no matter what age you are, 6th through 12th grade, invited to come and join us for that. So uh, we are thrilled and delighted to have you all here with us this morning. We're going to take up an offering. Uh, if you're a visitor or guest, you can let us know who you are. Fill out a prayer request form if you want. Put that in the offering plates. Uh, if you're a visitor or guest, when the offering plates come, your gift is being here with us. And so uh, you don't have to feel obligated to put anything in. Uh, if you're a regular giver, we thank you for your generosity that makes all of our ministries possible. And as we receive the offering this morning, uh, we'll receive the gift of special music. Thank you. 
as we would come to open your word as we uh, finish out in worship that uh, you might continue to have prepared us for what you would speak to us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name for God's people said, amen. Uh, before we get started, why don't you go ahead and stand up and uh, greet a few people this morning. Tell them you're glad they're here with you. Glad to have you uh, all with us here today. A number of things always going on. Uh, let's see, Angel, I see you here. Did you know that the flowers up here today are for you for your 10th birthday from your mom? Right? They are. I don't know if you read that in the bulletin. Yeah. Right? So this is just such an awesome bouquet over here. Uh, 
I don't know, Lisa Angel, you want to come up? Can we pray for you this morning? For no other reason that you got the flowers and I feel like doing it. <laughs> right? We'll give you that as your birthday gift today. Anybody else, if you want to come up and pray with uh, Lisa and Angel, you just go ahead and hop on up here. Oh, my goodness. You're doing fine. You're all good. You're all good. You got beautiful flowers over there today. I just feel like you, I just feel like praying for you. For no other reason than I saw your name and I saw the flowers. Is that cool? All right. So God, we give you thanks for uh, each birthday. We thank you especially today for Angel and uh, for the chance we have to celebrate with each other. Lord, I thank you for uh, Lisa. I thank you for your continued uh, strength and courage in her life in all things. And so uh, we thank you today that we could worship you together. We do it in Jesus' name. God's people said, amen. There you go. You can give uh, Angel a round of applause today. See, I happen to know that uh, some of you are headed back to college this week, so uh, I want to pray for you too. So if you've got somebody headed to school with you, uh, let's see, just go ahead and grab a hold of them. We'll pray for them here today. So God, we thank you for uh, those who uh, head back to somewhere different starting next week, and we pray a word of prayer and blessing on them. We pray that in their search for uh, more truth, that they would know that search always leads them back to you. So uh, we thank you for parents and families, and uh, bless them now as they go in Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen. Very good. We appreciate all of that that's going on. Uh, Let's see, a couple of things just to give you a heads up uh, before we get into the sermon today. Uh, There's a devotional booklet written by our youth uh, out there on the featured ministry table. Uh, If you would like this 16-day devotional, it's got just a a verse and a paragraph uh, and some questions for reflection. Uh, if you don't you usually do a devotional or have that, I uh, encourage you to pick that up from our uh, young people as they uh, wrote that after they got back from their mission trip. Uh, and then just a heads up that uh, in October, we're going to be doing a new all-church group, uh, all-church study. Uh, we're going to be using the book Lead, for God's sake. And if you like to get started early, if you're an early person, you're like, I want to get that and do that, uh, we've got copies in the office. We pay $8 for them. Uh, if you'd like to give a donation and uh, pick one of those up, uh, you are welcome to do so as we prepare for that, that next all-church study out there in October. Uh, we are finishing up our Ten Commandments series today. We've been doing it all summer long, and so today we come uh, to our final commandment, uh, which, if you've been uh, memorizing them along the way, is what? No coveting. Thou shalt not covet. Thank you. So they're in your bulletin, by the way, in case you want to cheat today. One last time. Uh, to know what's in them. Now, uh, we did, some of you, you might think, well, I remember number one, and and I want to tell you, I hope you remember number 10, and if you do, it's because you are, uh, experience the serial position effect. Woo, there's a 10-cent word, right? Got to be careful. You're like, what in the world is serial position effect? Well, it's when you love cereal. No, no, it's not. That is not what Jesus ate, right? Uh, Serial position effect is this, Our brains tend to remember the first and the last thing. We tend to remember the first and the last thing somebody tells us. We remember the first and the last thing we do in a day. We remember the first and the last thing. Any event that we have, our brains are hardwired to tend to remember the first thing and the last thing. It's why first impressions are so important. It's why how we finish matters so much. Because sometimes things in the middle, they they get a little fuzzy. If you go buy a car, the car salesman will tell you, this is a great car. It costs more than you can afford. You should buy it. And do you know what you've heard? Great car. I should buy it. Right? That's why you put the bad stuff in the middle. You put it on the things that you're going to remember on the ends. That's how your brain works. And so we're going to finish out the Ten Commandments series today. And maybe you remember commandment number one. I hope your Bible is almost fall open here to the book of uh, Exodus. And Exodus chapter 20 is where you find the Ten Commandments that we've been doing. Commandment number one says, you shall have no other gods before me. That's what God wanted his people to know before anything else, before any other commandment he would give them. He told them, no other gods. Uh, Then he gave a little bit of explanation about how that would look. Don't make any idols. Don't use my name in vain. Honor the Sabbath. Those things all flow out of that first commandment. Uh, Then today, we're going to do the last commandment. Uh, It's a little bit longer, Exodus 20, verse 17, if you're in that same chapter. It says, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, or you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. That's the final commandment. 
And so uh, the serial position effect says, well, here's what I remember. That's right. I, God said, don't have any other gods and don't covet. Don't want stuff that other people have. That might be what your brain holds on to. And, but the problem here is with the Ten Commandments, how long did God's people obey the Ten Commandments? How long did they keep in perfect obedience? Yeah, they didn't even make it to down the mountain. Like Moses came down the mountain as Charlton Heston and he broke the commandments right over that, that golden calf. That's the uh, poster for the 1956 version of the greatest entertainment of all time, right? So we're going to be showing that up at the star. You can bring a date night to uh, hang out with uh, the Council on Aging up at the star. Uh, in a week and a half, we'll watch the Ten Commandments together. It'll be awesome, right? Literally, as Moses comes down the mountain, they're worshiping a golden calf. Keeping the Ten Commandments was not the, the answer that God's people were able to give. God had given them a whole list of things that they shouldn't do. But you know what happens when somebody tells you don't do something? You tend to want to try to do it. right? When you hear no, one of the reactions our sinful brain has is to say, well, why not? I think I should. I, maybe I'm going to try. Right? It's what makes no such a powerful and dangerous word. Because ultimately, if we want to be people who glorify God, who actually live for Jesus, if you want to be a successful person, period, you've got to learn to grow beyond the no's in your life. No's are important. You should tell children no when they're doing something dangerous. You should have somebody tell you no when things are not good for you. But we don't like no. We don't like to hear no's. And some of us, we think that church is all about the no's, all about the things we shouldn't do. We get locked into making sure that nobody else does those things either. Religion becomes toxic when it's only about telling other people what they shouldn't do. Because ultimately, the gospel is not simply about the no's that God gives us to keep us safe. It's about where we go from no. We have to grow through the nose. There is a, a sense of movement for us as we get older from protection to preparation. When your kids are tiny, I mean like baby tiny, right? You are in charge of absolutely taking care of them. You should not let them out of your sight. You should make sure an adult is always watching them. You want to know where they are at all times. Some of you are a week and a half away from kindergarten. And you're going to have to take a new step because you're going to say, now I've got, got to let this child go to kindergarten. I've got to let them be on their own in a classroom and a teacher and somebody I don't know and cafeteria food. Some of us are about to send our children to college. Say, "Woo, there you go, on your own. No more no's from me. Text me every day. Right? Uh, let, let, let's do this. Let's try this. Imagine this scenario. Let's talk about kissing. Let's make it practical. Kissing, right? If you're in first grade, boys, should you kiss a girl? No, no. The answer is no. <laughs> we'll do a parenting class next. No, the answer is no. No. How about second grade? No. There you go. Third grade? No. Fourth grade? No. Sixth grade? Yeah, it's getting quieter. <laughs> the answer is still no. Still no. Still the answer is sixth grade. Still no, parents. It should still be no. Right? How about this? When you get married, should you kiss your wife? Yes. Yes, don't say no. I had just sort of tricked into the, into the no's there. The answer is yes. Right? You may now kiss your bride. That's what I tell people. I give them that order. Right? Somewhere between first, second, third, fourth, fifth grade and marriage, you go from, okay, don't kiss girls to like, okay, I got to get ready to kiss my wife. Right? At some point, God prepares you for your development of relationships, where it's simply more than just protecting you from all the bad stuff that's out there to preparing you to be a person who can face it. It is one thing to talk about holiness as God's desire to remove us from the sin of the world, and a whole another level of holiness to say, God, now help me step back into the world. One thing for God to say, I want my people to be separate. Another thing for him to send his son into the world to sit with sinners tax collectors. God moves us from protection to being prepared for what is to come. So when we read this uh, final commandment, I want to tell you, many of us think about, okay, I don't want to covet the house, the spouse, the animals, or anything else. 
All right, you, you want to get that? You kind of think of that as the list. That's what the commandment is about. You're thinking, okay, I, I won't covet that house. I won't covet that spouse. I don't want to covet that animal or tractor or car or whatever it is, right? I don't want to covet anything else. That's a hard thing, right? We read that commandment. We say, we shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. But I would challenge us to know that it's not about the stuff in this commandment. Let me read it this way. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You you should not covet his male or female servant or his ox or donkey or anything else that belongs to who? Your neighbor. Yeah. It It is a commandment that is not about stuff. It is a commandment that asks us, who's your neighbor? That's the challenge of this final commandment. Don't get stuck on the stuff because the stuff is not the focus that God calls us to. In fact, I would tell you that stuff is the thing that gets in the way of us understanding what God wants us to do. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, which is the other place we've gone all summer long. Right? If, if, you, if you've been here and you don't know the Ten Commandments, we have failed you. If you've been here all summer long and you don't have a, a place in your Bible where you've been reading the Sermon on the Mount, we've failed you. And so as we finish today, please, I tell you, go back and make sure you read those commandments that God has given. And then go and read what Jesus does as he takes all of those commandments and takes them to a whole other level. For people who had missed what God was doing in the rules and the regulations, Jesus comes to say it was always about the relationship that God desired to have with us. Jesus in that Sermon on the Mount says this in 633, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. Jesus doesn't say that it's bad to have things. Jesus is not uh, against all of our things. In fact, I can't possibly preach about your neighbor's things this weekend because they're trying to sell them to you. Your neighbors are literally begging you to come get their stuff. Please, take the stuff out of my house. Not my spouse, but everything else is for sale. Right? Have you seen all the garage sales as you drive around? We have so much stuff, we can't get rid of it fast enough. We get overwhelmed with our stuff. Jesus doesn't say don't go to garage sales. If your neighbors want to give you their stuff for a quarter, man, go take it. Right? If you didn't sell it this weekend, take it up to John Stewart. They'll sell it next weekend. Give the money to missionaries. Right? If you need to get rid of your stuff, do it. If the stuff is the focus of your life, if your neighbor's stuff is what you think about, you have missed the, the gospel truth that God is pouring a relationship into our hearts that gets us beyond our stuff. Jesus says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All the stuff that you want only comes after you decide what it is that you're really seeking in life. And some of you are far enough along the path to know once you start seeking Jesus, the desire for stuff starts to change. Uh, Jesus calls us not to the stuff of our neighbors, but to a relationship with them. Not to the no's of what God has told us we shouldn't do. It is not enough simply to say, I won't steal, I won't lie, I won't kill them, I won't commit adultery. Jesus takes all of those and says, listen, you've got to seek the kingdom Kingdom seeking is a positive action. Spirit-filled living is a positive action. Following Jesus is a positive action. As we get to the end of these Ten Commandments, what I want you to make sure you remember is this, that God did not come to give us commandments to keep us away from Him. God gave us commandments so that we could live closer to Him. And that Jesus comes with these Ten Commandments to remind us of how we should live in such a way. Saying no is a good thing for parents to do. But there comes a place where no has to realize that eventually your children are going to go. There comes a time where all of the no's we have said is in preparation for our children to grow into the next stage they have in life. And the same thing is true for us with our Heavenly Father. It might be that some of you still need folks who will tell you no. There is a place and time in every life where you're in need of people who will say, listen, I just need an accountability partner. Tell me no. Let me share the things I'm doing that I should stop. 
But part of why we gather for church then is not only for that kind of accountability, not only to say I want to move out of whatever life I'm trapped in, to move to a new life that says now I want to go somewhere different. I want to take it to the next level where I'm not just saying no, but I know that God wants me to live in a new direction. Well, which commandment does that? Uh, which commandment is the most important, you might want to know. I got all these laws. I'm reading all these rules that God gives in the Old Testament. Which one, really, if I can only remember uh, maybe one or two is the most important? Well, good news, somebody already asked that question. In Mark 12, 28, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. And noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? He wants one. He wants one commandment from Jesus. It's a bit of a trick. Maybe it's hoping for an answer. Maybe it's a struggle this guy was having. Maybe he's tired of all the rules and regulations that he's living under, and he sees in Jesus something that he hasn't seen from anybody else. Maybe you're there today coming to church. You're like, wow, when I think of church, I think of a lot of, a lot of things that tell me what I shouldn't do. I don't want to be a part of all of that keeping me away from God. Maybe you haven't been to church before and you think, I don't want to just find some place that gives me the list of things I shouldn't do. There's got to be more to it than that. Which commandment as followers of Jesus is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That's it. That's the most important commandment. The, the man asked him for one. Jesus gives one. The second is this. Wait a minute. What do you mean the second? He asked for one commandment, and Jesus is moving on to two. Jesus is tricky like that. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater, there is no commandment greater than these. Now, it's, it's somewhat bad English, but it's exactly how Jesus says it as recorded in the gospel. Because it should be there, are no, there are, are no greater commandments than these. But Jesus seems to clearly point the answer to tell him that he, he understands that he's given two commandments, the first and the second. But when he sums those two commandments up, he he explains that there's no greater commandment, singular. There's no greater commandment. One, Jesus puts for us these two commandments in place and says they're one commandment together. That loving God and loving people, loving your neighbor, are not two different actions. They are the same action expressed in different ways. Jesus gives us a first and last commandment, a beginning and an end to how we should follow him. He says, love God and love people. Jesus doesn't even give you anything in the middle to forget. If you want to know how Jesus sees the Ten Commandments, he understands that all of those commandments fall under that first and that last rule, to have no other God before me and to not want anything that your neighbor has, but rather to be able to see your neighbor are really summed up in these two commandments of positive action. This one desire to love in the vertical and the horizontal. That willingness to say, God, I'm going to love you, and because I love you, I love people. And when I love people, I'm loving you. That's a, that's a radical concept. That is a, a truth that we have to wrap our minds around over and over and over again because we are people who tend to love stuff and use people. When God calls us to be those who would love people and use stuff, those are two very different actions. It is one thing for us to focus on the no's, and no's can be important, right? You should have discussions. You want a little marriage counseling here, a little parenting tip. You should occasionally talk about things that you want to say no to, right? Those things that irritate you that you say, let's talk about this because you should stop doing that. Pick up your underwear, right? Stop it. Pick it up. Don't leave it on the floor, right? That's not my issue. I'm just sharing sort of a hypothetical, <laughs> right? Don't do that, right? That's, that's good and healthy. But more than that, you should also have a list of things. You say, you know what? This is what I want you to do. This is what would help me. 
help me help you, help me help us, right? I want you to tell me what you want for dinner. Just don't say, I don't care. Just don't, tell me what you want. I want to know. It's a positive action. It moves you in a positive direction. The problem with most of our relationships is we get locked into the negatives and the stuff and the resentments. And so we start to get to a place where we just block ourselves off. We're, we're content with no. When what God desires for you is a greater yes. The word amen is not a word that means the end. The word amen is a, me, is a word that means yes and I agree. In the church, when we end our prayers, we end our prayers in such a way that every time you end a prayer and you say, in Jesus' name, amen, what you're really saying, what the intent of that word means is to say, in Jesus' name, yes. That moves our prayer life to be a prayer life that simply says, no, 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 to a prayer life that says, God, I want to hear your yes, yes, yes in my life. What does that look like practically? Maybe it looks like prayer and worship. Maybe loving God and loving people means suddenly you realize why worship together becomes so important. As we move into a new school year, a new season, I want to encourage you to make worship a priority. As you set your fall schedule, I want you to say Sunday mornings and worship are important because it's how we share our love together and together give that love to God. You can go down to the park and do it on Friday night with Abe. Prayer and worship matter to us as means of showing love. There should not be a single student, a single school teacher, a single homeschool group that doesn't know they're prayed for. But the only way they're going to know they're prayed for is if followers of Jesus reach out to them and say, I'm praying for you. Now, there are little prayer cards for schools out there on the featured ministry table as well. This month, our prayer team is asking us to pray for our schools together. Next week, we'll pray for students and teachers. But the only way people who don't know is if you go tell them. I would love for teachers and administrators to be, to be overwhelmed in the next 10 days with notes from parents. Right? Your teacher can't, can't lead your children in prayer, but you can tell your teacher you're praying for them. Right? There's lots of things that the world will say no to, but the church gets to move beyond and say, we can say yes. Maybe it's study in groups. Maybe you want to get into a group, a lead for God's sake. Maybe you already want to say, God, I, I don't think I have time in my schedule, but I've got two months to get ready to find an hour where I would step out and meet some new people. Can I tell all of you, you're awesome people, right? You're awesome people. You should, more of you should know each other. You should work on getting to know each other. We do that in groups and sharing and time together. Uh, and starting next week, we're going to do a new series on, called Judged. Right? Judged. That sounds scary in a church. That'll drive people away. Right? We're going to do Judged from here, from the start of school until the fair. Why to the fair? Because at the fair, everybody gets judged. How many of you ever gone to the fair and gotten judged? Yeah, if you've done any project, right? Like, look, here's my flower, here's my picture, here's my pickles, here's my cucumbers, what, here's my sheep, here's my lamb. If you've ever had anything at the fair, you've been judged. I would love to get your picture of you being judged, right? So if you've got a picture of you being judged at the fair, send those to us here at the church or get us a copy, we'll scan it, and we'll share some of those up on the screen. Because judgment is one of those things that we've got to deal with the truth about. We've got to Ask ourselves, what does the Bible say about it? And there's a lot that it says about it. We should study it and talk about it. And then we should encourage one another. We should learn to share with each other. Right? Maybe an action is to say, God, I love you so much that I know in your holiness I need to repent. Maybe that action is stepping out then to invite some other people to be a part of worship together. Maybe it's helping or serving. Maybe your action is simply resting. You can love God by obeying his word. When God says, just be still. Right? Ten days till school for some of you, and it can be overwhelming. You are anxious beyond what you can possibly bear. And God says, listen, the way you could love me is to be still. Right? When Jesus is in the midst of the storm with the disciples on a lake, Jesus literally in that moment takes a nap. Napping is biblical. Yeah, <laughs> some of you are like, I'll write that down. That's good stuff, man. Pastor just said napping's biblical. I gotta relax. I gotta, I gotta say, God, you're in charge. Because I, I can find it hard to let go. I've just gotta rest in you. Resting in the Lord 
It might be a form of love that you haven't practiced before. Maybe asking for help. Maybe asking for encouragement. And we'll serve another funeral meal tomorrow here, and we are always privileged to be a part of that action and to walk with a family in a hard time. And so when you're in trouble, when you need help, sharing love means sometimes we've got to know who needs it. As a church family, I want to encourage you to know that you can ask and that asking is a form of love and how we share with one another. Uh, learning these Ten Commandments is not ultimately the goal of our summer, although I hope you got them. I hope you have put them away. I hope you know them better this week than you did ten weeks ago. But ultimately, our goal is to move us closer to Jesus, to know that in our lives, it's not just the no's that the law teaches. It's the next step to know that the love invites us to grow. It's that in your life, you need more Jesus and less drama and selfishness and complaining and bitterness and gossip and pride and anger and ultimately less of me and more of him. Those Ten Commandments were for God's people. They fell short over and over. They prepared God's people to receive the Savior for all the world, that he would die for us. And that if you've never known that truth, if you've never received Christ as Lord, there's no better day than right now. If the Ten Commandments ever kept you away from God, I hope and pray today you realize they were always there to bring you closer. That God's goal in your life is not a no, but a yes. So if somewhere in your life today you're moving into that new season, if today's a day where you know you're about to hit a new day, today's the day you want to say, Jesus, take over my life, we'd love to pray with you. So God, I lift up today each one of us in the room, but I pray especially for those who would take you in as Lord and Savior, who this day would say, God, thank you for the relationship that you've offered in Christ. I repent of my sins and want to follow you. I pray it in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. You can say yes, too, because they're the same word. So today, I'm going to invite you to know the prayer rails are always open and if you'd like you can stand as we sing together let's just finish out with these simple words right as I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning
worship with you all summer long. I hope it's been a good season for you. Another summer almost over. We pray as you come back and we go back to school that we would continue to bless and influence and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all that we can. I think we're leaving the chairs right where they're at. Yeah, we will not stack chairs today. Thank you upstairs. Very good. We are, uh, we are moving some stuff out of the rooms next door for new carpet. If I get a couple of guys to stay, we can just take us like five minutes. We would love that much help with us today. That would be great. I want to thank you for the privilege of serving with you week in and week out. It is an amazing journey to know that we're on. Laura, why don't you come up here? We'll do the benediction. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace from this day forward until we all meet again. Amen. God bless. Have a great week.